So hello everyone. Today we will see principal component analysis. It is a very important feature where we reduce the dimension. So it is also called as dimensional reduction. So whenever we have more than uh, we can say 10 or around 10, 15, sometimes it goes to 50s. So that time we need to reduce the dimension to two or three. So for that purpose, we do principal component analysis. Let's take one example what principal component analysis does. Say we have a maturity of fruits which depend upon the length, width, height and sphericity. So we have four features. So principal component analysis, what it does, it reduces its dimension from four to two dimension and which we call the principal component one and principal component two. So sometimes we misinterpret the principal component analysis, uh, eliminate the feature. It is not. It is just a linear combination of individual variable or we can see the features. So here we have a principal component which comprises the individual features. So and we can see the uh, alpha 1, alpha 2 are along with this. Uh, these are called load. So uh, for example, if we have around 50 features, we will get around 50 principal component. And if we see that each principal component represent how much uh, our features. So uh, principal component one here uh, representing 70% data and principal component two represents 16% data. If we look at these two features, if we consider these two features, so that will represent our total 86% of data and we will lose the some data that is around 14%. So that is okay if we have uh, uh, two dimension instead of 50 dimension to represent our uh, overall data with the 90 uh, with the 86% data. So in this case, we can eliminate rest of the our uh, component and we can have only two principal component. So let's talk about the dimension reduction, what it means. It means like, like for example, we have a, a two features and we have some data. If we eliminate one of the dimension, in case this we reduce, uh, we eliminate the X2 dimension, then we have only one dimension to represent this data. If we project this data into this, we have very less variance that means we have loss of data we are losing more data in second case if we take the same example and in this case if we eliminate the, this dimension and we represent uh, we project this data set into this dimension then we are getting high variance that means we are losing very less amount of data so we can say that we can eliminate this dimension. So from here, so we have reduced 2D problem into 1D problem, one dimensional problem. So this, was, this is the basic example of uh, uh, dimension reduction. Let's take one more example to understand more clearly. If we have data like this, if we take the projection of this data into x suppose x dimension then we have variance around this much if we take the projection around the y axis then we have variance around variance uh, around this much which is almost the same variance in this case we are unable to decide which dimension should i eliminate so we cannot eliminate any dimension because the variance is almost same. In this case, what we will do? So here the principal component analysis come into the picture. So for doing that, what we do, we just uh, plot a and secondary uh, dimension, uh, which uh, we uh, get a principal component where uh, uh, where we see that if the projection of these data into this 
dimension which is very large and projection of this data into this dimension which is very small in this case we can eliminate this part of the dimension and we have only one dimension so in this case also we have reduced the 2d into 1d the only thing in this we need to find a new principal component or uh, just like axis uh, which represent the most of data so before going to further in details there are a few terminology we need to understand like variance and covariance so variance uh, and covariance variance is the way a very simple form of covariance covariance it is, uh, uh, is the summation of x minus x mean into y minus y mean divided by n number of observation so this is a very simple uh, equation for covariance it tells about the relationship or trends it simply explain the relationship between two features these relationship can be in positive trends or positive like here in this case and that means if x is increasing and same time y is also increasing trend can be negative trend if x feature is increasing then y feature is decreasing or trend can be no there can be no trend in this case if uh, x value is remain constant that means x minus x bar will be the zero so overall the value of covariance will be the zero so we cannot say uh, what's the trend in same case here the y value is constant so this part will be the zero so there will be no trend apart from this this covariance does not tell about the where is the slope of this uh, data or the it does not tell about how far this data from this uh, uh, line so these simply tell about the trends are positive negative or no trends uh, if we talk about the covariance matrix it is one of the important uh, uh, step why so covariance matrix if we have n features so covariance matrix the basic formula for this is the variance between x1 and x1 uh, covariance between x1 and x2 so here the x1 will be the same and the other term will be the change x1 to xn so against x2 x1 x2 x1 and here we can see one thing the covariance of x2 and x1 will be the same as the covariance of x1 and x2 and same covariance will be xn and x1 and x1 and ns xn it will be the same so that except the di the diagonal element these corresponding element will be the same so this is the example of a square matrix and it is a symmetric about the diagonal so it is a symmetric matrix let's uh, let's talk about the concept of eigenvector uh, here we can see that the we have data set and whenever we try to find a new dimension for uh, to represent this data set there could be infinite number of orientation of let's see here uh, we there are uh, like uh, so many directions so this eigenvector will help us to find the exact orientation so that the maximum data can be represent along the principal component one and so on if we talk about the matrix mathematical representation of eigenvalue and eigenvector suppose a is a matrix then to calculate the eigenvector we take a vector v we have to multiply with the eigenvalue to the eigenvector this is the mathematical formula for the calculating calculation of eigenvector let's take one example here we have i uh, we are here we have a, a vector 2 into 2 vector to calculate the eigen value we use this formula this is simple and mathematical simply mathematical operation once you take the matrix of this one we will get the eigen value and uh, each eigen value will give one eigen vector so eigen 
from the four we got the one eigen value and from the one uh, we got the one eigen vector let's talk about the how to compute pca with the one example step by step before we take uh, any example for pca let's uh, recapitulate what pca does so simply we have a data set let's let's take example for two features we try to find a new axis with their zero mean data like we take the mean along the axis we take the mean along the y axis and we plot it and then we simply rotate this axis using the eigen vector so this was all about the PCA. Let's take one example. Here we have two features X and Y. So we need to step one is to define the data which is I have already defined. And step two is to find the zero mean data. What it means that calculate the mean of X feature and mean of Y feature and then substitute the corresponding data with the corresponding V mean value. So once we do this, we will get the zero mean data like 2.5 minus 1.81. This value will get 0.5 minus 1.8. This value will get same things 2.4 minus 1.91. We will get this value. So after getting zero mean data, step three is to create covariance matrix out of these matrix, out of these uh, data. So the formula for covariance for 2 into 2 is this one and we know that how to calculate the covariance. Once we got the covariance matrix, the covariance matrix tell us that the, what is the orientation of data so that it will help us to find the eigenvector which will be further named as the principal component. So Fourth step is to find the eigenvalue and eigenvector. So here uh, we have calculated the eigenvalue and uh, corresponding to eigenvalue, we next step is to arrange the eigenvalue. So le uh, let's consider lambda 1 which is 1.28, lambda 2 is 0 0.049. According to eigenvalue, we will get the eigenvector which we call the principal component 1 and eigenvector uh, value 2 we will get the eigenvector 2 which we call the principal component 2 so here we can see that the, we have got the two axis x does and y does x does which is called principal component 1 and y does which is called principal component 2 Next step is to calculate the total variance. So total variance, why it is important? Here we have, I have took the only two features. If we, if you have around 50 features, then you have to decide how many, how many principal component you want to keep. This one can only be, this uh, thing can be only done by calculating total variance. So this is the formula for calculating total variance for each vector or we can say each principal component analysis and we got 0.96 for principal component 1 and 0.368 for principal component analysis 2. Principal component 1 represent around 96.2. 3.1% of the data set whereas principal component 2 represent 3.68% data set so we can easily eliminate the principal component 2 so that was the main idea behind calculating the total variance next when we got the new axis so we need to project those data point to the new axis. Let's take one example. If we have one point, we want to project this point to our two dimension x and y. So we simply 
x component and y component so this point contain well uh, contain value from both feature x and y so same thing if we can do with this also project our zero mean data to new axis so that means here we have data we need to project these data into the new axis which is new eigen vector or principal component principal component so here we have zero mean data and we have eliminated this part uh, this axis that is a principal component two and we kept principal component one so project this data into this we do the multiplication we multiply b with the v1 vector and then we will get the final data and this final data will call as principal component let's see what overall happened here so uh, here we have a data set we found the new uh, we found the new axis at the zero mean that was the step two and after finding the new uh, zero mean axis we need to find the orientation of this axis so that we can uh, we can have a maximum variance along the principal component so this was done by two steps first was the finding the covariance matrix and second step was the using eigenvector once we got the maximum once we got the principal component then we need to to decide the which component we want to keep so in this case the 96 percent data is represented along this so we will keep this one and we will eliminate next step is to to define this data point according to the new axis so that means we need to project data to the principal component and we will get the ultimate principal component so this is all about the principal component analysis thank you so much